Welcome back to my channel, guys, where the stuff I build is not perfect. In fact, it is barely built right. Today we are installing a Belltech 3-inch front, 4-inch rear lowering kit on the 2018 GMC Canyon Denali. Let's dive into it. The Belltech kit comes with shackles, U-bolts, and all of the hardware for the rear flip kit and also shorter rear shock absorbers and shorter lowering struts for the front. First thing we need to do is lift and support the truck. Here with the wheel off, you can see the tried and true leaf spring suspension that you see on a lot of trucks. On the leaf springs, your axle hangs below the leaf springs here. With this drop kit, it comes with the pieces necessary so that we can put the axle on top of these leaf springs, therefore giving us that difference in height. It'll drop us down about four inches in the back. We need to remove the rear shocks. I'm going to put the ever so slightest amount of pressure on the rear axle just to take a little bit of tension off those lower bolts. Next, we're going to remove the U-bolts and spring pads. We're going to take the bump stops off and you can remove this thin little piece of metal here once we pull the bump stops off. Now we need to remove the leaf springs. 
This forward bolt on the driver's side is the most difficult one. It backs out against the gas tank. So we need to back it out as far as we can. And then we actually need to cut the head of this bolt off in order to remove it. The kit does come with a replacement bolt for this. So we do have something to put in its place. Here you can see the gap that we're working with. So we need to get in this little gap and cut the head of that bolt off. That is the fuel tank that it's pressing against. So we need to be careful not to damage or gouge the fuel tank in any way. In the back, the rear bolt does jam against the spare. I don't show it, but I did have to lower the spare just a little bit in order to get that rear shackle bolt out. Here I'm using a bi-directional biologic leverage tool to push against the muffler as I pull on that bolt in order to get it out of the front mount on the passenger side. Pull the rear shackle bolt as well. So here you can see the axle is pretty much floating. It's no longer hooked up to anything. I've got it supported by two jacks. One jack underneath of the pumpkin supporting the weight and the other jack is up closer to the yoke and that is going to help us with the pitch of the axle as it goes back in. We need to reverse the center bolt on the leaf springs. They say to use clamps to hold everything together while you do this. I'm going a little bit above and beyond and using a few. One end of this does have a rounded head. You're going to need to use a vice grip pliers to hold on to that, not these channel locks that I soon find out do not work. Now we need to remove the rear shackles. Take off the OEM shackles. Take note of the direction that the bolt in the frame rail goes through. It's going to need to go through in the same direction on the new shackles. <clears throat> And when we put the new bolt on with the new shackle, 
We're not going to tighten these down just yet. The instructions say to tighten everything down once the truck is back on the ground. So we're gonna let these swing once we put the Beltec shackles on. Now the factory exhaust right behind this hanger interferes with the location of the lowering shackles. We need to cut off just the end of this exhaust tip just behind this hanger back here. So now we need to reinstall the leaf springs, but we're going to be placing them under the axle. So I'm gonna hook them into the front first, and then we're gonna lift up the axle and then hook the back of the leaf spring in. I'm using a combination of one jack and then the other to adjust for height and then for pitch as we move the axle up into its new position. This is the U-bolts and new hardware that come with the flip kit. It has a little cradle there, or a perch or a seat for the axle to sit down in. And it's gonna reach up and grab underneath of those welded perches as you see here. It's tipped just a little bit back because I don't have everything quite lined up. You can see I'm trying to keep the hole at the bottom of this bracket aligned with the center bolt on the leaf spring. And we're gonna lower the axle down and then I'm gonna shift it around, get it aligned, and get everything seated. Once you have everything seated, install the new Beltec bump stop and the new U-bolts and hardware and tighten everything down to torque spec. We're gonna reinstall the rear shocks. You may need to trim these bolts down just a little bit so that they don't rub against the leaf springs.
And that wraps up the back end. Already seen a big improvement? Let's move on to the front end. Going to start by loosening the lug nuts and then lifting the truck and supporting it. Underneath the front of the truck we need to remove the splash shield with these four bolts that'll give us access to the sway bar. We need to remove the sway bar end links. and then remove the sway bar itself. We need to remove the three nuts on the top of each strut assembly. The front two are fairly easy. The back one is pretty tricky. I recommend a ratcheting 18 millimeter wrench for the back one. Remove the lower strut bolt on the control arm. And we're gonna loosen, and I actually ended up removing uh, this brake line bracket and moving it out of the way so that it uh, gives us just a little more flex and a little more comfort against some of these brake lines. We're going to heave down on the control arm and hub assembly to pop the strut out of position. Both struts need to exit towards the rear of the vehicle. You're not going to be able to get them out uh, underneath of the steering linkage. We're going to pry the OEM bump stops out and then we're going to cut off that cup that they are mounted to. And once we have everything cut off, we're going to grind everything smooth and hit it with a coat of paint real fast before installing the Belltech bump stops.
Next, we need to loosen the upper control arm bolts. These bushings hold tension when the bolts are tightened down. We're going to loosen them, and then we're going to jack the hub up by supporting underneath the control arm with the jack and lifting the hub to the position you desire according to the instructions. If you want the lowest it goes, this needs to be 18 inches from the center of the hub to the fender. I'm gonna lift it up and then tighten the upper control arm bolts back down to put tension in the new position. Now I took the strut assemblies into my work and had one of the guys in the mechanic shop use a spring compressor, a floor mounted spring compressor. These are much safer than the little impact drill, one on each side that you use at home. I don't mess around with springs and wanted to have something a little more safe than a driveway method. So we took the springs apart, compressed the spring and removed the top cap. Then you need to pound off the bottom seat for the spring and install that on the new strut. And then once everything's assembled back together, put the strut back in place. Again, we're going to need to heave on the control arm to get it back into place since we raised it and then retensioned it. It's going to be under load again, even with the shorter strut. This part may take two people, somebody to heave and somebody to push the strut into place. With the strut back in place, from this point, it's just a reversal of the removal process on the front end. We're going to reinstall the sway bar and sway bar links that came with the Beltec kit. And we're going to reinstall the splash shield and bolt the wheels back on. Don't forget your brake line brackets as well.